this is the recent SpaceX renders of Starship on Mars, you might notice something interesting. The landing legs look a lot like the ones on Falcon 9. Is that just a coincidence? But if not, why would SpaceX choose that design, and how well would that kind of design actually work on the Martian surface? Well, it turns out the Falcon 9 landing legs have been a major source of inspiration for how SpaceX is designing the landing legs for Starship. Back on August 5, 2020, Elon Musk responded to a question about Starship's landing legs, saying, V1.1 legs will be tilled to 60% longer. V2.0 legs will be much wider and taller, like Falcon, but capable of landing on unimproved surfaces and auto-leveling. In other words, while Starship's legs share some basic concepts with Falcon 9's, they are being designed to handle much more. They need to be tougher and more adaptable, especially for landing on rough and uneven terrain like that found on the Moon or Mars. So first, to get an idea of what the Starship landing legs might be like, let's take a look at how the Falcon 9 legs work. The Falcon 9 landing legs are a vital part of what makes the rocket partially reusable, combining clever engineering with robust functionality. While they may look straightforward, they consist of four key components that work together seamlessly. The deployment arms, the legs, the pushers, and the latches. The deployment arms are telescopic tubes made of nested hollow cylinders that remain collapsed during launch. When it's time to land, these arms are extended using pressurized helium, gradually pushing outward to lower the legs into place. This design might seem familiar, it's the same concept used in old pirate telescopes and monoculars, which is why it's called a telescopic mechanism. Beyond compact storage, this design allows the arms to act as shock absorbers. Much like a car's suspension system, they can briefly compress during landing, softening the impact when the rocket hits the ground. If the landing force exceeds what the arms can absorb, a backup system called the emergency crush core which is an aluminum honeycomb structure, can compress to dissipate the excess energy. The legs themselves are both lightweight and strong. Inside, precision-cut grooves allow the deployment arms to nest snugly when the legs are stowed against the rocket body. Each leg weighs about half a metric ton, so managing their movement carefully is critical. That's where the pushers come in. These are smaller actuators located near the base of the main arms. Their role is to give the legs a gentle outward push at the start of the deployment sequence. Contrary to popular belief, Falcon 9's legs don't extend using motors. They drop into place using gravity. The pushers simply initiate the motion, while the main arms guide and stabilize the descent to prevent any sudden jarring or misalignment. Latches are another essential part of the system. These mechanical locks keep the legs securely in place throughout the ascent and most of the flight. There are latches at both the base and the top of each leg. The top latch, which connects the leg head to the rocket body, is easy to spot if you look for the small gap and sloped connection riveted to the fuselage. These latches are designed to prevent accidental deployment during flight and are only released at the exact moment they're needed. When it's time to land, the entire system springs into action. The latches disengage, the pushers extend to nudge the legs outward, and the deployment arms telescope down to gently guide each leg into position. As the rocket touches down, the arms absorb the shock of impact. If the force exceeds what the system can handle, the emergency crush core takes over to ensure a safe and stable landing. The landing legs for Starship could share a basic mechanical concept with those of Falcon 9, but given the differences in vehicle design and mission profile, significant modifications are necessary. Starship's legs will be both larger and longer than those on Falcon 9, and the number will increase to 6. This redesign is essential to support Starship's much greater mass and to reduce the risk of total failure if one leg is damaged during landing. While Starship is primarily constructed from stainless steel, its landing legs are likely to use lightweight materials such as honeycomb carbon fiber, similar to those on Falcon 9, in order to keep weight down. Despite their size, these legs would be considerably lighter than stainless steel alternatives. Unlike the Falcon 9 booster, which primarily operates within or just above Earth's atmosphere, 
Starship is designed for long-duration missions in deep space. This introduces additional challenges for the landing system. Pneumatic systems, for example, can be unreliable in space due to extreme temperature fluctuations affecting gas pressure, leading to inconsistent performance. While these issues are solvable, they add complexity. Hydraulic systems offer more stability across varying temperatures and pressures, but present their own risks. After prolonged exposure to vacuum, a damaged or kinked hydraulic line could render the system inoperable. This is also solvable, but not trivial. Electric motors provide a more reliable alternative, especially for precise and reusable mechanisms. In cases where only single-action deployment is needed, simple mechanical solutions such as spring-loaded systems may be the most robust and lightweight option. Having landing legs is one thing, but choosing the right place to land on Mars is just as important for a successful mission. SpaceX has selected a site in the northwest of the Tharsis region in the northern lowlands called Arcadia Planitia. Many of the low-lying areas there are marked by grooves and ridges that run in parallel, which are signs of glaciation. These features are similar to ones we see on Earth, where the freezing and thawing of subsurface water slowly moves materials near the surface. This suggests that ground ice likely exists just below the surface in Arcadia Planitia. Besides that, the area is relatively smooth, with fresh lava and Amazonian volcanic flows, which makes it easier to land a spacecraft. All of this makes Arcadia Planitia a promising site for future exploration missions. That said, the ground will never be perfectly flat. While landing sites are carefully chosen and surveyed, orbital imagery can only detect surface features larger than about 2 meters. In past Mars rover missions, boulders around 1 meter in size have been fairly common. So what happens if one of Starship's legs lands directly on a rock that size? Ideally, the landing leg system would adjust to compensate. But if it doesn't, the structure must be able to support nearly half of Starship's weight on that one raised leg. Another concern is stability after landing. Some people think Starship is too tall to land vertically without tipping over. That's not entirely true. While it is tall, its center of gravity is relatively low, thanks to the placement of its fuel tanks and engines near the bottom. With a diameter of up to 9 meters, Starship has a wide base that helps make it more stable than it might look. Elon Musk has said that SpaceX has a 50-50 chance of launching its first mission to Mars in 2026. It's definitely a bold and optimistic goal, but it gives us a clear idea of what they're aiming for. If things stay on track, we could see SpaceX testing the Mars landing legs sooner than expected. And honestly, I'm pretty excited to see that happen. What do you think? Could we see a landing legs test by the end of this year? Yes, or is it still too soon? Let me know in the comments. Successfully landing the Starship upright on Mars on the first attempt is far from guaranteed. It may take several tries. If Starship successfully reaches Mars in 2026, SpaceX plans to significantly scale up its efforts. The company aims to send approximately 20 starships to Mars during the 2028 to 2029 launch window. Looking further ahead, Elon Musk has suggested that up to 100 starships could make the journey between 2030 and 2031, with as many as 500 launches possible by 2033. As the campaign progresses, SpaceX is expected to refine its operations and make the process increasingly routine and efficient. This could involve building a dedicated landing pad on Mars and possibly even deploying a version of the Mechazilla launch tower to eliminate the need for traditional landing legs. These developments would make interplanetary travel more cost-effective. Though challenging, such advancements are within reach and NASA is already laying the groundwork. NASA's Space Technology Missions Directorate is actively developing technologies to enable future explorers to live and work on the Moon and Mars by leveraging in-situ resources. These technologies not only show promise for space applications, but also offer benefits here on Earth. One such initiative is the Moon to Mars Planetary Autonomous Construction Technology, or MMPACT project, funded by NASA's Game Changing Development Program 
and managed at the Marshall Space Flight Center in Huntsville, Alabama. MMPACT is exploring the use of large-scale robotic 3D printing to construct infrastructure on planetary surfaces. Although it may sound like science fiction, NASA has already demonstrated this concept using simulated lunar and Martian regolith, showing that it could become a practical reality. In collaboration with industry and academic partners, MMPAXT is developing techniques to process regolith into construction materials. Local resources like regolith can serve as aggregates for concrete, while water and other binders could also be extracted from the surrounding environment. This would drastically reduce the need to launch materials from Earth. Pioneering work in this field was led by Dr. Barok Kushnevis, a professor at the University of Southern California, through NASA's Innovative Advanced Concepts NIAC, program. He developed a technique called contour crafting, in which molten regolith mixed with binding agents is extruded layer by layer to form structures such as landing pads or radiation shielding. He also created selective separation sintering, a method that uses heat and pressure to fuse powdered materials into ceramic, metal, or composite parts. This technique is ideal for making precise tools or spare parts in both gravity and microgravity environments. NASA is also working with private partners like ICON and Austin, Texas-based company known for applying 3D printing technology to home construction. ICON built a 1,700-square-foot simulated Martian habitat, Mars Dune Alpha, which includes living quarters, workspaces, and communal areas. This prototype is being used for NASA's crew, health, and performance exploration analog mission simulations at the Johnson Space Center, running through 2026. With support from NASA's Small Business Innovation Research, SBIR program, ICON is developing its Olympus construction system, designed to use native materials on the Moon and Mars for autonomous building. These developments are a vital step toward creating sustainable human habitats in other worlds. Landing on Mars is not easy. The planet's thin atmosphere provides little aerodynamic resistance, making it difficult to slow spacecraft during descent. Its surface is unpredictable, with rocky terrain, dust storms, and extreme temperature shifts that can interfere with landing systems and equipment. Even the most advanced technology faces immense challenges in executing a controlled touchdown. Every attempt must navigate a high-risk, high-reward path, where even small errors can lead to failure. SpaceX's Starship program, ambitious as it is, will likely face multiple setbacks before achieving reliable Mars landings. But as with all great engineering feats, progress will come through iteration, learning, and persistence. NASA, private companies, and academic institutions are developing groundbreaking technologies to support these missions, from autonomous construction systems to in-situ resource utilization. The path to Mars will be filled with technical and logistical hurdles, but each step forward builds the foundation for a sustainable human presence in another world. If you have watched this far, I truly appreciate your time and interest. I am glad to know that this video has been helpful to you. We are on our way to reaching our goal of 10,000 subscribers, so feel free to support us by hitting that subscribe button. It really helps a lot. Thank you.